Hi everyone, this is Tom, and in this video, I want to talk about how you can use AI, for example, Grok or ChatGPT or any of the other AI models, to test yourself as a way of preparing for exams. And this is, we know that testing is a very powerful way to help you retain information long term. And anytime you can add in a different dimension to how you consume and uh, interact with information, the, the better you're going to retain that long term and understand it. So for example, if you're reading something, listening to it, doing something physically and practically around that information, illustrating, seeing visuals, having lots of different ways of uh, getting that information um, helps you to understand and retain it better as opposed to just reading or just doing physical stuff, or just listening, or just watching videos. Um, you want lots of different uh, ways of interacting with that information. So by having this voice, um, having a, a voice feature ask you questions verbally, and having to think about it in response to a verbal cue as opposed to a written cue in terms of written questions, that's going to be an additional dimension that helps you to. Um, improve how well you can perform. The other aspect is if you're going to be doing a exam that is based on somebody asking you questions, so that could be an ASCII exam, an interview, defending your PhD thesis, um, an oral viva, um, anytime somebody's asking you questions in an exam, you want to practice as close to that exam as you possibly can so you get good at that. If you just practice answering questions that you've read, and then someone asks you a question, your brain is not really set up and practiced in that uh, skill of answering verbal questions. So it's useful to do that. But I want to start by talking about something called the testing sandwich. And you may be familiar with um, some of my other videos. I really preach using the testing sandwich. And the testing sandwich is a technique to use during a single study session. So this is for a single study session. So it could be one to three hours. You're sitting down and studying a specific topic. So for this example, we'll use that you're studying um, Cushing's disease. And if you're going to sit and study Cushing's disease, you do the testing sandwich for Cushing's disease. So how does a testing sandwich work? Well, you arrive at your desk, you're going to do some studying. You start with short answer questions. And so these short answer questions, very uh, brief, quick, short answer questions that ask you specific facts to recall about that condition or that topic that you're studying. And these short answer questions kind of prime your brain, get you thinking about the topic, and they also see your baseline knowledge of that topic before you even study it. Then you move on to something called read and recall. So this is a way of actively reading and absorbing the information. So you're, you're reading but constantly covering up the information, going to a blank piece of paper, and putting down everything you could remember, uh, free recalling that information from memory. So you're not just read, you're not just absorbing it, you're actually recalling it all the time. And we know that recalling is when you actually write information to your memory as opposed to when you're passively absorbing it. So you go through the, the whole topic that way, then you do some kind of exam practice. So this might not be an exam, might even be your uh, an interview or a PhD thesis, kind of uh, defending a PhD thesis or um, whatever kind of test that you're, you're going to be, uh, whatever kind of testing scenario that you're going to be presented with, you want to practice that scenario. So often this is doing multiple choice questions, could be doing essays. So you sit down, you've already done short answer questions on Cushing's, then you do read and recall on Cushing's, then you do an essay on Cushing's, or it could be some kind of verbal test. So where does um, 
voice AI testing fit into this? Well, you can use voice AI testing to ask you short answer questions, or you can use the voice AI quest, uh, testing to, to give you a verbal test and practice for your OSCEs or your interview or your Viva or whatever kind of verbal test is coming up. And so let's go through a demo to kind of demonstrate what I mean by this. So we've got Grok here. I like Grok at the moment, but it's going to keep changing. AI models are going to keep adapting. Uh, I think Grok is the best at the minute from, from my kind of uses, but I've used ChatGPT in the past and in six months, definitely in a year or two, could be completely different. But for now, we're using uh, Grok 3. So tap the icon to do a voice thing. Say, hi, could you please give me a test of short answer questions on Cushing's disease? I'd like you to ask me a question, wait for my answer, and then give me brief, concise feedback on what I've just uh, answered. And then move on to the next question, please. Hi. Could you please give me a test of short answer questions on Cushing's disease? All right, first question. What hormone is primarily overproduced in Cushing's disease? Uh, cortisol. That's correct. Cortisol is the primary hormone overproduced. Next question. What gland is typically involved in causing Cushing's disease? Uh, adrenal gland. Close. That Cushing's disease specifically involves a pituitary gland tumor causing excess cortisol production. Next question. Name one common physical symptom of Cushing's disease. Uh, weight gain. Yes, weight gain, especially around the abdomen, is common. Next question. What diagnostic test is often used to confirm Cushing's disease? The short synactin test. Actually, the short synactin test assesses adrenal function, not specifically Cushing's. The dexamethasone suppressant test is commonly used to confirm Cushing's disease. Next question. What is one potential treatment for Cushing's disease? Um, if there's a pituitary tumor, I'm guessing you'd remove the tumor. Exactly. Surgical removal of the pituitary tumor is a common treatment. Next question. What complication might arise from untreated Cushing's disease? Um, high blood pressure? Yes. Hypertension is a frequent complication. Nice job overall. Want another question or something else? Could you please give me a score as a percentage on the questions you just uh, asked me. Let's break it down. You answered seven questions. Five correct, cortisol, weight gain, pituitary tumor removal, hypertension, and partially correct on the gland question, and two incorrect, adrenal gland and short synactin test. That gives you about a 71% score. So there we have a score of five out of seven, seventy-one percent. So um, hopefully that kind of demonstrates what you what you can do. You could continue testing yourself indefinitely; it will keep coming up with questions. If you find the questions are too long, too short, um, you find there's some kind of problem, you just ask the AI to adapt and change them. It's actually very powerful to to make to tailor it exactly to what you want them to talk to you about. So this could be useful, for example, let's say you do a study session and then you're driving home or you're traveling home uh, or you're walking home. You could put some headphones in, put the AI with the obviously with the screen away if you're driving, you don't want to be distracted by it, but you could get it to talk to you and while you're walking home you're in your headphones and it's testing you on what you just studied in the library so it's a great way of um, being more efficient with your time
And the final thing I would say is, if you're using it to test yourself, make sure you're tracking your scores. And I recommend using a tracking table. So it would look like, or you can use the tracking tool on the member site, but it would look like this. <clears throat> and these numbers up here are spaced repetitions. So your, um, your, when you study a topic, within a few days, you kind of forget everything that you just studied. And so what you need to do is add in repetition, studying the same topic over and over again, but spacing out those repetitions. So the second repetition would be 10 days later or two weeks later. The third repetition might be uh, six weeks or eight weeks later. And so you're spacing out these repetitions over time and that's how you really get get stuff to stick in your memory long term but so these numbers here are the spaced repetitions so number one is the first repetition number two is the second etc and then you'd have these uh, topics so let's say we're doing Cushing's which is what we've just done and then in this box so we've just studied Cushing's for the first repetition inside this box you would record um your firstly your the date when you did it so that you can see when you need to uh, study that again so when you're coming back and thinking i need to do my second repetition and space it out properly you can see the date where you did the first repetition and um you know wait say 10 days or two weeks before you do the second one then put in your confidence so i would just record uh you know low medium high confidence on that topic then your score on the short answer questions, and then your score on the exam uh, practice questions. So you're creating an objective assessment of how good your knowledge is. With the short answer questions, this is how good your knowledge is as a baseline before you're studying the topic. So kind of from scratch, from cold, without having gone through stuff. And then you're, you're getting a score on your exam practice uh, so how good you are after you've done the studying session and how good you will be in your exam. And so depending on how you're using this AI voice testing system uh, depends whether you would record this as a short answer questions or the exam practice. So in this scenario, remember we got, um, let's add this in here. We got five out of seven, so that was 71%. So I would add that into the box as 71%. So I hope that video was helpful. Um, I would encourage you to have a go with it, experiment with it. Um, I like Grok. Uh, I think it's pretty good at the minute. Um, so you download the, the Grok app and um, you can get started straight away, giving it a, a try. And you can use this... Um, as much or as little as you like, but I would try to use this testing sandwich system and integrate it within that testing sandwich system and track your results over time. Uh, if you want a nice version of these notes that I've been kind of scribbling on my iPad, you can download them on the Zero to Finals Patreon along with all the other notes. So you don't have to rewatch the video, you can just refer back to my, my notes. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.